everything you say makes such total sense. That, and I've heard um, some of this before, but never as completely and as articulately as you presented it. And I've wondered, and I'm wondering even more now, why more people don't get it that we need to have this interactive symbiotic relationship with the natural world. And I mean, the only thing I can think of is that it's greed. Somehow greed has taken over from culture. And maybe because the cultures are so big that we can't relate to all the people like you can in your Quaker meeting. And that we don't feel connected to that. And because we're immersed in that, we can't feel connected to the earth. Is that, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot more to it than that. But like, I'm struggling with is it just driving me crazy that more people don't get it, what we need to be doing, even as we see everything falling apart in front of our eyes? Oh, my. Oh, my. Um, so there is something called Dunbar's Number. Dunbar's Numbers is an anthropological concept, and there's only so many names that we can relate to, and there's, a, there's absolutely a limit to the size of a neighborhood or the size of a village, or the number of neighborhoods in a village. So there's things we can learn which have to do with scale, which are real, they're almost mathematical, um, and we could organize along that line. But indeed, greed has been sold as the highest good. It's, that's, this is John Locke, and uh, that Smith guy, and um, so a few others. Okay, so this is all... I like to say I like to not indulge in conspiracy theories. I like to talk about systems thinking, systems mathematics, and really advanced math. And right now we're in the period of aggravation just as a phase change takes place. Now by Boolean logic, by advanced systems thinking. There's no way to see what's on the other side of a phase shift. We all feel the aggravation. We all get upset, like you so beautifully said. We're all like, I'm just tired of this. Why can't we do something? Well, we're in the aggravation. And what we need to do, I, like to, I would like to suggest, is take care of ourselves and take care of each other because we need to make it through. And the new organization on the other side of the phase change, which is unimaginable by mathematics, by definition. You can't get the, you can't see that. All right. But that new organizational structure, that unimaginable structure, has crystal seeds that, that trigger it, that come out of what we're doing now. So so just to be hippy dippy about it, I want to say we need to go with our heart, and 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 that's work. It it means dropping some stuff, you know. It needs being brave, and a lot of people are being fed fear. Fear works really well with greed. The two are buddies, you know. They get along really well. So so, I would I am saying. I may be a little elderly, but I'd like to stay along a little longer. This is really interesting. I want to see what happens next. Well, that's not fear. It's also not Pollyannish. It's realistic, I would like to propose. So we need to be kind of brave pussycats at this point. Mm -hmm. Um, it's it's daunting, and, um, and and I'm just trying to help. You know, I'm I'm telling you some stories, and I'm trying to tell you stories that you haven't heard a little bit, and put things together in certain ways. And and that that was excellent comment. It's really good. Thanks. Yes. I learned a word. What is the range of Dunbar's number? What's the number? 120. 120.
150. That's the minimum? Uh, max. That's yeah. the max. What's the minimum? Oh, oh, yes. Um, okay. So this goes back. I mean, you can talk Hebraic tribes, right? Okay. What's a quorum? All right. Four so the one. minimum number of people you need to make a decent decision is about eight. Mm -hmm. The perfect number is mm, 13. Mm. Which is coven. 13 is the perfect number. It's an odd number. It's 13. Um, at 23, you're still good, you know, but you need some discipline and practice. By the time you get to 30, you better break up into smaller groups for decision making. And then, oh man, I have so much more to say about decision making. Okay, but uh, this is difficult. But is that close? Thank so, you. yeah. That's exactly it. You can only remember the names of 150 people. It's a brain thing. I can remember the faces of a thousand people, mm -hmm. but I can only remember the names of a much smaller group. And so, if I'm going to work in local culture, I've got a scale. I've got a scale challenge. So more than a dozen, less than hundreds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yes. So I was wanting to carry on from what you were saying a little bit more and, and also from the Dunbar's number business that Hume Harari, Yuval Harari did work, an Israeli um, scholar on um, People can get how people have gotten past Dunbar's number to create a global culture, which is indeed a destructive culture of capitalism, and that's through stories that we can co-imagine, right? Globally, we bought in to the hyper-individualist story of capitalism and the. Smith's invisible hand is going to, you know, pat us on the bottom rather than whack us across the face. We, we, we bought into it. But that also means if we recreate those stories, and young people are doing that, that the rules change. Because it really is the story of the culture that creates the rules, that creates the outcomes. So if you just take the same system and you put new people in it, you just keep on getting the same output because the system is determining the behaviors. So, so Danella Meadows, the queen of systems thinking, she says, well, how, how, how do you change the nature of the system? Where are the leverage points? And it really is in, in the storytelling. But the young people, they're beginning to get that more. If I think of the 30 years, 40, years almost of teaching this stuff. You know, in the 80s, man, talk about a time when you couldn't even contradict the, the capitalist story without being, you know, accused of being a to people. You know, even in the political system, we're challenging capitalism. And young people are talking about community, that we have to have community. But to me, with all of us tribal folk having lost our roots, that bears a huge tragic on it, right? Because we don't have those roots. To me, we have to find the communal roots in the polytribal planet that we are. For me, planet Earth is my my home, you know, my planet. And I think it's crucial that we find ways. I mean, it's totally honor the work in the local because that that's where the saving of the planet's gonna happen. That's where the regeneration is gonna happen is all of those little pockets. But we also now have to <coughs> behave that this little jewel we are on that is crumbling. You know, Gaia is an organism and that organism is sick. And and so we, we, we do have to find the way to, at the same time, be global citizens. And, and uh, I recommend um, Paul Hawkins' book, Re Regeneration, and there's just this one little quote in Regeneration that is so powerful.
with me. He says that all of us working in all our individual areas on regenerating, it's social regeneration, it's ecological regeneration, it's all those different, it's, it's community, finding all of those answers to how we begin to act in community with other people and with all of our brethren species of plant and animal uh, nature. It says all of us working individually, we're like white blood cells, you know. You don't see, there's not that, 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 that one answer, and you don't, you can't point to the place where it's happening, but we're all starting to emerge and do this work. And we're even adopting the same language. You talk to, you know, your bioneers, you talk to your indigenous people, you talk to kids in schools. We're doing the same thing. And it's like healing the poison of working together. So I think it's happening. We have to nurture it, though. Right? We, that, that it's our job to try to help. The, it, you know, we're kind of irrelevant. We have to be helping young people. Right, because the answers are in the middle schools, the high schools, the grammar schools. They're the ones who are going to really face the challenge and have to do it. So you have, need to help them bring the tools and figure out how to do the multi-tribal, multi-local, um, and acknowledge with compassion the mutual trauma. Because right now there's so much finger pointing, right? Because there's so much pain. Bad there's math. so incredibly much pain. And, and it's hard for us to even function through that pain, right? Um, unless, unless we can just exercise the discipline of optimism. And, and, and um, what's her name? Um, Solnit, Rachel Solnit. Was Rebecca. Just Rebecca. 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 Rebecca, thank you. So, thank you. Uh, she's, she's so good at that, to help, us, to help us with that part. So I work with, I work with, young, with young people. Um, our, it, it's it, it's our, our duty to cultivate that discipline to help them, right? But it's happening. It's happening. It's so different than it was in the '80s. Everybody's saying these things, and it's all over the world. It's it's the young people all over the world who are saying these things, who are who are organizing. And it's not only the young people. It's us old farts who almost gave up too. Who are going? Oh my God! They're doing it. They're saying it. Right. That's very encouraging, really. Thank you. Um, I'd like to point to the Sunrise Movement. Uh, yes. Which many, many of you know of, but that's been um, gratifying to see that upswell. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Don Ellis said the first place to have the greatest leverage in the system is a paradigm change. Yes. The very dominant paradigm. The dominant paradigm. <laughs> And that's through the story. Yeah. It's very challenging. But I, do, but I do want to be speak a rude truth. Um, no one's going to change at this point unless they are forced to. So our job is to keep vision while we are doing triage. And triage is tough. It's hard work. And... We were speaking about this just earlier. The, the helping professions are, are losing heart right now because the job is so difficult. Mm -hmm. But the job, let's be honest, is triage. But the other job, which you were speaking to, is hopefulness and vision. So, and back early in what you were saying, um, stories, and I was, I was, I used the term narrative, but um, we have, we who are here now of all ages <laughs> have a work to do that really appears impossible and is daunting and is difficult and is going to get more difficult, not less difficult. And so this requires holding each other. And uh, yeah, I agree, the shift does appear to be happening, but I'm afraid a lot of the systems young people are um, indulging in are extremely brittle. And brittle is a very interesting ecological terminology. 
brittle ecosystems. They look good, but they fall down fast. It doesn't take much to push them over. So education is, I guess that's why I worked so hard to put a book out, right? But um, education is our task, which is kind of hopeful because we're simultaneously doing triage. And that really takes some heart. And practicing. Practicing. So I suggest salon first, pilgrimages, small, small tasks like that. It looked to me like about five acres of eucalyptus down there. It's a bit more than that. How big is the eucalyptus grove? Eight acres. Eight. <laughs> it depends on where you want to count the edge. Okay, eight, 17, that close to that. That probably is 80 acres, about half yeah. of yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Looks like a lot of storm damage from this last winter, mm -hmm. what I looked for. Okay, well, so there's some forestry, you know. There's some actual forestry we can do. Um, I, I'm so lucky to have both the traditional knowledge of placeness and science. I don't think we should be afraid of science. It's another tool. Um, I'm, I'm being a really bad ante these days. I'm downgrading permaculture. I'm, I have some serious qualms about permaculture. Oh, so you think you're a designer, eh? <laughs> and I suppose you want some royalties, eh? So um, design is not the same as landscape scale council. That's a process instead of a design. It's a very delicate point. Okay, it's a very delicate point. So it, we should understand that there are opportunities for us to do design work, but we're probably going to always do make mistakes by having too much of a design mind. Mm -hmm. we, we really need some more orthogonal thinking. So again, peripheral, off at an angle. And, and that stories can help with that. I, um, one of my students at the last PTC I taught, oh, oh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I'm sorry to, uh, permaculture is a tool of social forestry. Okay, got to get that out. So, um, and <clears throat> I wrote the North American curriculum for the PTC. I was teaching permaculture before Bill Mollison. <laughs> so I have attitude. And that was the course I started at Laney College in 1971, which was a social forestry course. And it was broad scale holistic ecology. Cat Steele says that I am the first ecological educator in Northern California. I'm still here. Take advantage of me. <laughs> so, the eucalyptus. <laughs> I looked at that grove and I went, good, log mulch, nice. Well, that could be put on contour, a little bit more ground contact. Okay, looks overstocked. Yeah, where's the, inter where's the um, intermediate? What other species can we get in here? Uh, we should take some of these babies down. Um, and wow, what a charcoal opportunity here. Yeah, all right. Uh, yeah, especially since you can do charcoal in large logs. And you know, Bincho man. Time. Hmm? Bincho time? Bincho time. What's that, burying a large log? What? That's the, the Japanese um, teriyaki charcoal. Oh. That is it's very, it's like a, it has the energy density of like a can of propane. Is it yeah. one log burns for hours? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Except, you know how you have to make that stuff? 
You have to pull the damn logs out of the kill, incandescent, and cool them super fast. No, thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I have a different plan. But, um, yeah, so um, I make Chi Chi Japanese tea ceremony charcoal. And I have delivered it to the tea ceremony schools. When, when uh, the uh, Homeland Security Act was passed, the importation of charcoal was outlawed. So the Japanese tea schools were unable to get their charcoal. Now, I'm going to go orthogonal on you. Guess what that tea ceremony charcoal is? White oak. Have you ever heard of the, the term ecological implication? It's very rare. I'm going to hand some things around here, around the circle. Um, white oak is the most implicate tree species all over the northern hemisphere. White oak is understood to be the triple goddess tree. And if you mess with white oak, she kills you quick. <laughs> she doesn't mess around. And this is consistent through all these cultures that there's a taboo, a very strong taboo, about messing with the white oak. Yep. So as I'm doing tending in oak savanna, oak pine savanna, I'm high pruning because my ultimate goal is the reintroduction of cultural fire. And as I'm doing that pruning and that high tending, I'm following the four S's and I'm looking at every branch and I'm sorting to make my ecotopian markers. So these are ear cuffs. They come off your ear without having to have any piercing. They're found in Gaelic graves as grave goods. And the only wood that doesn't break when you try to make these things is white oak. So by coming into relationship with a tree which has more relationships than any other tree, you have a nice story to tell. So these are the air cuffs. And I hope they come back all the way around. And um, <laughs> um, this is a pendant, right, a necklace. And this is the triple goddess. So what we have here is the screech owl, the propertius dusky wing, which is the white oak butterfly, and acorn woman with her skirts. So when I cut that branch down, I was blessed. And I noticed it. So I sorted it out. And I stashed it so that I could make jewelry in the right season. Like in between going down the Google hole to write this bloody book. <laughs> okay, other comments or questions? <laughs>